it's Friday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faithful Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we thank you for all the good things you've been showing us this week on the broadcast. Lord, we ask you again today for revelation of your Word. We ask you for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And Father, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast. And Lord, I thank you today for ministering to them in a great and in a mighty way by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week and all next week on the broadcast, we're doing a series of teachings entitled, Resist the Devil. And I want to go back over to James chapter 4 and verse 7 and look there again at our foundation text. In James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, let's go to 1 Peter 5 and let's look at our other scripture there. 1 Peter chapter 5, it says this in verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Then it says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. And then let's go over to Ephesians chapter 6, and let's look at our other uh, text for this week on the broadcast. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 13 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand or resist in the evil day. And so friend, you can see from those three scriptures that we've been looking at all this week on the broadcast that it is our God-given responsibility to resist the devil. Now, what does it mean to resist the devil? It means to push back against him and against everything he's trying to do in your life. Resist the devil. Push back against him and everything he's trying to do in your life. Now, friend, you and I, we cannot have God do this for us. We cannot pray and ask God to resist the devil for us. And we shouldn't be praying and asking God to do something about the devil in our lives. God has authorized us and empowered us to resist the devil and run him out and run him off in our lives. And that is the only way that you and I are going to enjoy victory over him. We have to resist him and everything he's trying to do in our lives. Now, we told you on yesterday's broadcast, in this life, there's a myriad of different things that you will have to resist. And if you don't resist them, they will devour you. They will eat you up. And so you and I as believers, resisting the devil is just part of the job. And one thing we want to do is we want to stay in resistance mode. We want to be on the watch for the devil and anything he's trying to do in our lives. And when we, we recognize something he's trying to do, we want to be quick to resist it. Now, go with me to John chapter 10. And we'll uh, start there on today's broadcast. John chapter 10. Now, in James chapter 4, verse 7, it says there for, that you and I are supposed to resist the devil. In fact, why don't you say that with me today, friend, as you're watching the broadcast. Resist the devil. Now, one thing that we have to ask and, and look into is, what is the devil? Because this is what you and I are supposed to resist. You see, one of the most important things that you can learn as a believer is what to resist and what to yield to. You know, a lot of people are confused about what is the devil and what is God. You know, we looked at a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 about the Apostle Paul's the thorn in his flesh. There's a large portion of the body of Christ who believe that thorn was from God, that, that was, God was tormenting him and, and, and uh, buffeting him and punishing him. And right there in the verse, it says it was a messenger of Satan's sin. And so 
don't think that you can't get confused about what is actually God and what is actually the devil because you can be. Now, we're not going to be, but you can be. And so if you are going to resist the devil, then you have to be aware of what actually is the devil in your life. You know, in John chapter 10, um, one of the things that Jesus was doing in this chapter is he was taking the time to differentiate between the good shepherd and the thief. And you can go read this chapter and you'll see that. And he's taking time in this, in this chapter to say, this is the thief. This is how he operates. I'm the good shepherd. This is how I operate. And one thing he said in John 10, 10, is he said, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, why would Jesus take the time to tell us this is me, the good shepherd, and this is the thief, and this is what he wants to do. Why would he do that? He did this because he knew the devil would try to confuse us about who God is and about who he is. God knew the devil would try to do this. He would try to confuse us about who he is and what he's doing and what God is and what he's doing. And so Jesus is taking the time to make it clear, look, the thief this is what he's doing. He's stealing, killing, and destroying. That's what he's doing. Here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. That's, that's what I'm doing. And so one of the things, if you and I are going to get good at resisting the devil, one of the things that we got to get good at is recognizing what actually is the devil and what is God. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, it says this, For such are apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And so there were false apostles who were telling people, we are apostles of Christ. It went on to say in verse 14, and it says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And so one of the things the devil tries to do is that he tries to pass himself off as God. He tries to pass himself off and what he's doing as God. And the reason he does that is so that you and I don't resist him. See, if we know it's the devil then there's a good chance we're going to say no to it and resist it and stand against it. But if it actually is the devil and we think it's God, then we won't resist it. And this is why the devil tries to pass himself off as God, because if you think it's God, you'll yield to it and you won't resist it. Now, I think you're starting to get some understanding of why Jesus took the time in John 10 to, John 10 to tell us, this is the thief, this is the robber, and this is me. He's doing that because he knew the devil would come and try to pass himself and what he was doing off as God, trying to transform himself into an angel of light. Now, in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus resisted the devil the first time that the enemy came. He said, turn these rocks into bread. Jesus resisted him. He recognized it was the devil and resisted him. Now, the next time the devil came, he told Jesus, cast yourself off of the temple because it's written. Um, God will give his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways, lest, they, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And so you can see what the enemy is doing. The first time he came, Jesus recognized it was him and resisted him. And so the second time the enemy comes, he gives Jesus a scripture and he's endeavoring to present his evil thought as God's thought. Why would he do that? Because he knows that if Jesus thinks it's God then Jesus won't resist it. Come on, if Jesus thinks that jumping off the pinnacle of the temple is okay because he's given his angels charge over me, if Jesus thinks that's God, then he'll do it. He won't resist it. So what the enemy did with Jesus is he tries to pass 
his thought off as this is God's thought. See, it's written. This is what the Word says. And so, friend, I just said all that to you to let you know we need to be aware of what is actually God and what is actually the devil. We need to be, if we're going to resist the devil, we need to be quick to recognize that's the devil and take our stand against it. And many are confused about what's God and what's the devil. And so they don't know what to resist. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ that think that God is giving me some cross to bear. You know, God is giving me this pain. God is giving me this disease. God is giving me this anxiety because it's just my cross to bear or I need something to learn. And so they just bear it and don't resist it. And so come on, you and I, with God's grace, by His Spirit, with His help, we're going to be quick to recognize what is God, what is the devil. And come on, friend, when you and I recognize that something is the devil and of the devil in our lives, we are going to be quick to resist it. Praise the Lord. Now, let me give you some things that will help you to recognize what is the devil and what is God. In Psalm 35, 27, it says this, Let the Lord be magnified, who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God likes it when his people are doing well. That word prosperity, that, that, that's one way to define it, that you're doing well. Doing well in every area of your life. Well, God likes it when you and I are doing well in our lives. He, he likes that because he loves us. And when you love someone, you want to see them prosper. You want to see them do well. Third John 2 said, Beloved, I, I pray, I wish, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And so God likes it when we do well. He is for us. He is for our prosperity. The devil, on the other hand, is against you. He's against me and he's against our prosperity. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Our adversary, the devil, is roaming around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word adversary means opponent. And so the devil is against you. He's against your prosperity. He is your enemy. The word enemy means one who hates another and wish, wishes him injury our attempts to do him injury, to gratify his malice and ill will. The devil hates us. He's against us. He is against our prosperity. He doesn't want us to do well. In the uh, NLV, the New Living Version of that verse in 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, it says the devil is working against you. He's working against your prosperity. He's your enemy. He's your adversary. He doesn't want you to do well. And so here's something you can pick up on right away. Anything that threatens your well-being, anything that threatens your prosperity is of the devil, and therefore you must resist it. Anything that harms you, hurts you, oppresses you, torments you, friend, that's the devil. And, and you and I, we need to resist it. Poverty is the devil. Lack is the devil. Sickness and disease is the devil. Fear, torment, anxiety, depression, addiction, bondage. This is the devil. And come on, it's not God. God is, is for your prosperity. He likes it when you're doing well. And so God would never put anything on you to harm you, to hurt you, uh, to oppress you. When you recognize those things in your life, you need to recognize this is the devil. And when you do recognize it, friend, you need to stand against it. You know, um, early on in the ministry, uh, right after me and Amber had, had gotten married, uh, things got tight uh, for us financially in the ministry and uh, personally as well. Um, and I won't go into all the, all the reasons why that was. I'll just tell you that that we had failed to obey the Lord in some, in some things he had told us to do. And th that's why we found ourselves in that, in that predic predicament. But when we were in lack financially, 
I remember one of the things that we, we, we had talked about, we had said, and I remember saying to Amber, this is not God. This is not what God wants for us. He does not want us uh, lacking and struggling in this area of finances and provision. And because we first acknowledged that it wasn't God that was doing that to us, we took our stand against it and started to resist it. We went to the Lord and prayed and sought Him about what to do. And we took our stand against that because we knew it wasn't God. And friend, this is why it's so important you know what to resist and what to yield to. If we would have just laid down and said, well, God's just trying to teach us something. God's just trying to prove us. He's just trying us. He's just trying to, to, to get us to learn something through this punishment, through this pain of not having enough. It, then if we thought that was true, we would have just laid down and yielded to do it. We wouldn't have took our stand against it. We wouldn't have sought him about why it was that way and made changes and, and did things necessary to get out of it. We would have just laid down. And friend, if we just lay down and yield to it, we would still be in that situation today. But we didn't. We resisted it. And so anything that threatens your well-being, that threatens your prosperity, is of the devil. And you need to resist it. If you're battling addiction today, anxiety today, depression today, sickness in your body today, whatever it may be, those things are not of God. That's not God doing that to you. God doesn't want that in your life. That's the devil. And therefore, you need to take your stand against it. Praise the Lord. So number one, anything that threatens or opposes your prosperity is of the devil. Number two, anything that opposes the word of God is of the devil. And therefore, you must resist it. You know, in the beginning, God told Adam and Eve, don't eat of the tree. If you do, you'll die. The devil came in and said, you won't die. Well, that opposed the word of God. And so what they needed to do is they needed to resist that and stand against it. You know, the enemy is always endeavoring to get you and I to act and think and believe and talk in opposition to the Word of God. And so anything that opposes the Word of God is of the devil, and it needs to be resisted. And then thirdly, anything that opposes what God wants to do in your life is of the devil, and therefore you need to resist it. God wants you well. God wants you strong. Um, God wants you healed. God wants you prospering. God wants you sound in your mind. And so anything that opposes what God wants for your life is of the devil, and therefore you need to resist it. You know, you need to ask yourself things in your life. You need to ask yourself, does God want me this way? Does God want my life this way? Does he want this thing in my life? This addiction, this bondage, this oppression, is this what God wants? And if the answer is no, then friend, you need to kick your resistor into motion. <laughs> you need to take your stand against those things that are in opposition to what God wants for you. The moment you recognize the devil in your life and anything that he's trying to do, the moment you do, you jump on it and you need to get to resisting it. Now, this is one of the reasons why it is so important that you spend time in the Word of God, reading and studying the Word of God, uh, listening to good teaching and preaching of the Word, going to a church that teaches you the uncompromised Word of God. The reason that, so, that is so important is because in the Word of God, you will find out what you should be resisting and what you should be yielding to. See, the only way to know what to resist is to spend time in the Word of God because God in His Word reveals to us who He is and what He wants for our life and who the devil is and what He wants for our life. And so as I spend time in the Word, one thing that's happening is I'm learning about what I need to resist and what I need to yield to. See, friend, early on in my walk with the Lord, I found out from the Word, God doesn't want me sick. God doesn't want me in poverty. God doesn't want me depressed. God doesn't want me def uh, afraid. God doesn't want me weak. He said, be strong. And so I, I quickly learned to know that when I see sickness and disease, that's not of God, that's the devil. Take your stand against it. 
If you see lack of provision in your life, you quickly recognize that's not of God. You take your stand against it. How, how did you know those things were of the devil? How did you know to resist those things? You know to resist those things because you spend time in the word and the word reveals to you who God is, what he wants for you, who the devil is, what he wants for you. And so friend, let me encourage you. Anything in your life today that you're sitting there, you're watching the broadcast right now and you know this, this is in my life and it's not of God. It's of the devil. It is the devil. Friend, when you recognize that, kick your re resistor into gear and get to standing against the devil in that area. You start pushing back on him. You say, no, depression, not in my life. Anxiety, no, you don't. Not in my life. I'm pushing back against you. Sickness and disease, no, you don't. Not in my life. I'm the healed of the Lord. Healing belongs to me. Devil, I know that's you trying to make me sick, trying to take my healing. I push back against it with the word. I push back against it in faith. I call my body healed, praise God. And friend, as you do, that. This is how you're going to run him off out of your life. But if you're ever going to resist him, you're first have, going to have to recognize what is the devil in your life. And I'm telling you, friend, when you do, get to resist him. And if you do, you will see him flee. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we're asking you today to help us to be a, aware of the devil, to recognize him recognize what he's doing in our lives. Lord, we want to resist him. We want to take our stand against him and against everything he's trying to do in our lives. And so we're asking you to help us to be aware of him. And anytime he's trying to do things in our lives, help us to be aware of it. Father, as we are, as we, as we pick up on what he's trying to do, we will resist him, we will stand against him, and we will see him flee from our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching the broadcast this week. I'm telling you, the Lord has been revealing some powerful things to us about resisting the devil. Now, don't forget to come back Monday because we're going to have another week of this series entitled Resist the Devil. We're going to continue this teaching. We're going to get into next week the power of resistance. We're going to get into how to resist the devil. We're going to talk about the importance of being strong so you can resist the devil. And so you don't want to miss next week's teachings. It's going to be wonderful. So join me next Monday for the next edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. I'll see you then.